What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today I'm going to show you how to get the film look in DaVinci Resolve using both the free built-in tools as well as a film emulation plugin, Dehancer. They did send me the plugin to make this video, but no money exchanged hands, this video isn't sponsored, and they don't get to review it before I post it, so all my thoughts are my own. Let's get right into it. All right, so now that we're on the computer, let's just jump right into it. The first thing you wanna do is obviously go to the very bottom of your tabs here and go to the color grading tab, which is right here. It looks like the rainbow color wheel. We're going to click that and we have a nice fresh canvas to start on. First thing I wanna do is make sure that my settings are in DaVinci Wide Gamut and as well as Output Color Space Rec 709. That is my current workflow these days and I am really, really enjoying it because I feel like it just gives the best color rendition for what I'm doing. So because of that, the first thing I'm going to do is add another node, and this is going to be the one of the last nodes on this node tree. And the first thing I'm going to go to this first node right here, I'm going to go to effects, I'm going to drag color space transform on this one, and then I'm also going to drag color space transform on the other one as well. So the first thing I'm going to do here, boom, color space transform. So now that we have color space transform on both of these, obviously nothing has changed because we haven't dictated anything. So we're going to go to effects and because this was shot on the Sony a7S III using S-Log3, I am going to type that in to make sure that we are in the right color space. So I'm going to say sgamut3.cine and then S-Log3 on the gamma input. So what I wanna do is put it on DaVinci Wide Gamut and then I'm going to put it on DaVinci Intermediate on this one right here. So that is dictating our into color space. And then on our final node here, we're going to go to this and do the complete opposite, which is DaVinci Wide Gamut. We're gonna go input gamma and go DaVinci Intermediate. And then we're going to do Rec 709 and Rec 709 a because I am working on a MacBook and Rec 709A just tends to work better on Apple machines. Now we have a nice little Rec 709 grade and it looks pretty good. What I want to do is make this better. That's the whole point of color grading, right? So what I'm going to do is make another node and I'm now going to do my basic adjustments here for exposure. So I'm just going to bring this down quite a bit to like 20 ish. I'm going to raise this up to bring in some nice brightness and then I'm going to bring down the mid tones right here and that you can see is kind of crushing everything and that might be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go minus two, around minus two is good. So this is like your overall exposure, your offset. Your gain is like your brights, whites, highlights, that kind of vibe. And then your gammas, your more mid-tones, skin tones, and then your lift is like your blacks and shadows. So that is going to kind of dictate if you're coming from the photography world, that is like the best easy intermediate photo to video translation I can offer. Now we have a nice little exposure adjustment going. I like this, we're already looking better, but I wanna give it that warm look. So we're just gonna add 100 to the color temperature. It just looks a little bit warmer now, and then I'm going to add some magenta because all this green is kind of making things a little bit too green. So I'm gonna first go with five, and your skin tones start to pop a little bit more. If we go up a little bit more, it gets too much, maybe seven. Let's go like 6.5 just as a nice little middle ground. We're gonna add some contrast as well. I tend to go about 1.035 on most of my clips. And as you can see, it kind of just crushes everything a little bit. And then I like to play with the pivot to kind of dictate where those blacks and the contrast is actually coming from. I kind of want this to be a little bit on the brighter side and see how, as I move it left and right, how much it's affecting different things. Somewhere around the 350 mark is pretty good. And then I like my mid-tone detail around 12. Right now, that's kind of just like a nice little base grade that we got going. You can see before, after, already we're looking significantly better right here. And then I think I'm just going to raise shadows, see how that looks, just bring some more detail into the image, especially like in her hair and whatnot. Three looks good. I always like to do a little bit of color boost and that just adds that nice little pop there. Then we're going to move on to the next tab. So now that I'm in this new tab, what I'm going to do is go over to my sharpness tab right here and I'm just going to zoom in to face and detail and kind of see how soft the eyes are. I think this one, I'm probably gonna go 0.48. Just that extra little bit of detail and sharpness, which I think looks pretty good. I'm going to just make a new node right here in between this, and I'm going to go to my curves right here. So what I'm gonna do is go into hue versus hue, and I already know coming from the photography world that all this green is actually gonna be showing up as yellow, and that's why there's such a massive spike in the yellow green area and not in the middle of the green area. What that means is that all of this greenery, most of it is showing up as yellow, 
yellow and this is going to really affect how things are. So I'm going to kind of dictate like I want this to start here and this to start here. And then I'm just going to play with this. And obviously this is having a massive impact. So what I want to do, because we're going for that more film look, but even if we weren't, I kind of like a little bit more green greens and less yellow greens. So we're just going to bring that down a tad bit there. And you can see the effect that's having right there is going less yellow, more green. And then what I'm gonna do here is hue versus saturation. I'm kind of just gonna dictate where this is beginning and then I'm gonna play with this. And so I'm just gonna desaturate a little bit. And then what I'm also going to do is luminance. So then I'm gonna once again dictate here where we're starting and whatnot, and then just kind of see how this is being affected. So I actually might wanna raise the yellows just a little bit so there's a little bit more of that color contrast going on. So I am gonna just do this and that looks pretty good to me. That is just kind of fixing the greens right there. Then what I'm going to do is do a little bit of vignetting. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to add a nice little circle. What I'm going to do here boom, boom, focus on her because a lot of lenses, especially vintage lenses, had nice little vignettes going on. They were, well, nice little <laughs> imperfections in the lenses. And one of those imperfections was a pretty harsh vignette. So what I wanna do is kinda just keep that as is. And then what I'm gonna do is hit invert right here. And then I'm gonna go back to my curves right here. And I'm just gonna kinda crush that. Obviously that's way too much of a vignette, but I want you to see how that is being affected. So I'm just gonna bring this down just a little bit. And you can see that it adds just that little bit of extra contrast to our subject. It makes your eye go towards the subject and boom, like obviously it doesn't look that unnatural. The fall off looks pretty natural. So when you look at that, you're just like, oh, your eyes are drawn here. Like I'm telling you to look here. So that already looks pretty good. And this is where we get into the more film section of things. With the built in tools on DaVinci Resolve, what you can do and what I like to do on a lot of clips is halation. And that is something that is very common in old film lenses. And it kind of adds that red vibe that you see going on here. Obviously, we're going to dial this in right now. You can see how much of an impact that's having and it doesn't look great right now, but vintage lenses definitely had this like red outline on high contrast areas. So we're just going to hit view isolated areas and we're just kind of going to play with this and see where we want this to actually hit. The higher I go, the less area it's going to affect. For this kind of clip, we don't want it affecting too much on the face. Obviously, it's having a massive impact on the rest of the image because look at that. Oh my goodness, that looks almost cartoonish. We're just going to kind of dial this in as we see fit. And we want the normalization at 100, and then I'm just gonna bring this back down to one. And now it looks a little bit more natural. So I'm just gonna keep bringing this higher until it's less evident. And now on off, on off. You can see it's affecting the earrings here, a little bit on the side of the face and on her eyes and eyebrows. Obviously strength, that's going to impact how heavy this is. And all these sliders are going to have a slightly different effect on that. So what I like to do is just kind of move it left and right, see how it's affecting things and then dial it in and go way too far one side and then bring it back as I see fit. So saturation, I'm just gonna bring it back a little bit and then spread, you can dictate how much spread you want going on. The default is pretty good, but I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit more. And then there we go. And then basic grain, I like this one as well because you can dial in how much grain you want. And this also adds to the filmic look. If we hit play here, how much grain you have going. So we're gonna hit back to here so we can see the grain and we're just going to play with the size and whatnot. And then we can kind of dictate how soft or harsh we want the grain. I'm just gonna make it a little bit softer. I'm going to increase the size a little bit. I'm gonna lower the strength a little bit. Then saturation, I want that as low as possible because I don't want it to look like noise. I want it to look like grain. Now that we have that going, the filmic look, you got that, that looks pretty good. It allows the audience to see that you've put a little bit of effort in. There's a little bit of grain. It looks a little bit more nostalgic. I moved the vignette around because I just wanted to make sure that anything that I was doing here wasn't being affected by the vignette. So what we're going to do down here is actually go to glow. We're going to go to the glow effect. We're going to drag that on. And as you can see, if we bring this all the way down, you can kind of see where things are happening, right? What we're going to do is just bring this to a point where it's not too excessive. And what I like to do sometimes as well is just make it a color so it's very obvious. And if we wanna add that more like sunset glow to her, that works too. Already you can kind of see a difference what's going on right there and then see how different things are being affected. So I'm just gonna bring this to, for this one, that's what I'm happy with. And I'm just going to play with gain, see what I'm kind of working with, hit back. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit, 
gamma. I'm going to then, ooh, see, like that's that's a pretty big effect right there. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Saturation, I might bring that up quite a bit. And spread. Right now it's very concentrated on our subject and I kind of just want to make the spread a little bit less concentrated. So if I just go this, it kind of diffuses it. And then you can still see there is a before and after going on. That's quite nice. And that looks pretty good. Now, obviously these are the tools that are built in within DaVinci Resolve and you can dial them in as you see fit. But those are the two main ones that I use to get the more filmic look. Now I'm going to show you the power of Dehancer and why you might want to consider adding it to your toolbox. If you do like what it has to offer, I got you a 10% discount using my code Mark Taraz on any of their products both photo or video. We have this wonderful plugin called Dehancer, and this is the newest version, and they have some fun things that they have on here. So what I'm gonna do is drag on Dehancer Pro, and I'm just going to put this on before our color space transform, because what I've noticed in my personal testing is it tends to look a little bit better. And as you can see, it has completely changed our footage and not necessarily for the better. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to up here, Rec 709, and I'm going to go to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Boom. Little bit less crazy, but skin tones completely washed out and whatnot. That warmth is gone. Everything has changed. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of play with different things. And honestly, you can do a lot with this and it depends on the look you're going for, but I tend to do all this stuff more so in the first node that we have here. Like if I'm doing exposure changes and if I'm doing white balance changes, I like doing it on that first node because it's just a little bit more powerful. And I find that the control I get on this tab is significantly better. So once I put that on, I'm just gonna dial in changes as I see fit on this tab. And I'm just gonna dial it in a little bit warmer and I'm gonna dial the tint a little bit magenta. Now that we have that, you can do again, the same kind of thing. You can add contrast, you can do all these different things. So if you enable this, you can add all the contrast back that you want. You can see how that is affecting different parts of the image. But again, this kind of stuff I like to do on the first tab. Like I'm not usually going to be doing stuff in these first two tabs of the exposure and the film developer. So I'm just gonna disable that. So film, this is where I really like to go kind of crazy. And my favorite film right now, and for quite a while has been Cine Still 800T. I just love how things look. It gives it that more filmic vibe. And to me, I think it just looks so, so good. So if I turn that on and off, you can see how it's affecting the image. We have this wonderful push pull slider and you can really dial in that look exactly how you want it. So this is the default. I'm gonna go a little bit more this way and then a little bit more this way. It kind of depends on what you want. So I think I'm gonna push it a little bit on the higher side. So this is the default. I'm going to bring this to here. So film compression, I actually do use this tab quite a bit. So I'm gonna hit enabled and it just adds that more filmic look. As you can see, we have all this dynamic range and we have the whites and the gradation and whatnot, but film kind of softens those things, right? So we can enable that and I'm just gonna see where I want this to sit on her skin tones and brightness. I'm gonna bring this down quite a bit and then I am going to hit my white point and just kind of play with this. And I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. So we're at a hundred. So I'm just going to put it at like 85. That looks about good. Tonal range. I'm just going to bring this up and down and up and down. The default is 30. So if I bring it up, more saturation to skin and whatnot, less whites. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit and then color density. I'm going to also play with and you can see in the skin tones up here how that is affecting things. So color density, you can see it's going from more white to more skin tone and it's kind of just evening and flattening things out. So I'm just going to bring this up to like 65. That looks pretty good. So if we enable and then disable and then enable, disable, you can see the differences we're making right there. As of right now, the film look has very much been transformed on this shot right here just with a few steps on Dehancer. Now if I wanted to expand this, I could dictate what my black point is and usually I tend not to do this one too much because I feel like sometimes it can get washed out or way too contrasty way too quickly and then again the white point I feel like dialing in the other stuff I don't really need to do that unless I really need to brighten something but then again I can go back to that first tab and do stuff there so I'm just going to disable this because it's not making that much of a difference now print linear probably going to be like the closest especially when you're working with log it gives you that nice look but if you want to dial in that more cinematic look you can figure out what your favorite films were shot on and usually that is Kodak 
2383 and then boom you got a completely different look going right there you also have all these different options here fujifilm kodak endura so it's just it's a very different printing process it kind of depends on the look you're going for and then another thing i like is the analog range limiter again it kind of just like limits certain things from going on that just make it more filmic. You can kind of see how things are dialed in and dialed out. Color head, that's just adjusting the yellow. I'm not usually doing this kind of color work in the tabs. If It's there for you if you like working that way with sliders instead of with color wheels and curves. So it really just depends how you like to work. But this is my personal favorite part of this entire thing. And this is where I get to dial in the film grain, the halation, and the bloom. And I absolutely love that. So as you can see here, we're going to zoom in onto her face and you can see how it has already automatically applied grain they have different presets here so you have all the different isos you have all the like the different millimeters as well as iso so you usually get 50 250 500 and it kind of gives you like three options for each kind of film so we have eight millimeter 16 35 and 65 and for this kind of shot the lower millimeter you go the more grain there's going to be so 16 35 a little bit less and then 65 even less so. The 65 is very, very fine because as your film gets bigger, these things are just not going to show up as much. And then you have 50, 250, and 500. And obviously the higher you go, the more grain there's going to be. Eight millimeter, 500 versus 250 versus 50. It's going to change depending on what you want. The thing that I've noticed is that I can bring this up to 100 and it's going to be different on each thing. So obviously whatever they have going on in this software, is just slightly different every time. It's not just presets there is difference in grain quality if I bring it up to 100. As you can see, these are a lot bigger, a lot blockier versus the 65 at 500 at 100. I'm going to bring this to 35, 250 and kind of play with the grain here. If I hit play, you can see how that grain is affecting things. So I'm going to go 3550. And I kind of like the 3550 more just because one, this is full frame 35 mil and then it was shot in daylight. So I don't think there should be too much grain going on, but then the halation is super, super fun. So again, this is the thing that I like better than the built-in Da Vinci one. And I think this really exemplifies what you can get with different looks. So here we turn halation on and it's a much more subtle look. Let me turn off film grain for you. So just like the film grain, you have eight, 16, 35, and 60. The lower number is going to give you a more intense effect. The higher number is going to give you a less intense effect. And then you see this thing called no remjet. And what remjet is, is just like a special coating. So it would kind of dictate how intense this red halation vibe was. So if we have no remjet versus remjet, you can see how much more contained that effect is. Super 8 remjet, really messing with our look right here very, very strong, kind of really affecting our skin tones here. And we don't like that. What I'm going to do is hit super 16. Again, you can see it's a much more subtle effect than the built-in Da Vinci one. And then if we go no remjet, it's really affecting things. But this one is a lot less crazy than the Super 8. So again, if we're going to 35, if we zoom in, it's almost barely noticeable now. So if I turn it on, then off, it's a lot more subtle. And that looks a little bit more filmic. Like you have this more red, warm vibe. And if we go remjet, Again, it's a little bit more hazy and whatnot, but it's not to the point where it's ruining our image. So Super 35, it gets a lot more subtle. And then 60, it's almost imperceptible to the regular human who's not color grading. So here it's just more so skin. It's very subtle on the edge and the high contrast areas. And then if we go no remjet, it's a little bit more. So I like 65 no remjet versus 35 with the remjet. Can we see a difference between the two? Yeah, I think the 65 no remjet kind of just looks a little bit better to my eye. And if we turn it on and off, you see that does have a decent effect on skin tones as well as overall perception of the image. And then we have bloom and obviously halation and bloom kind of go hand in hand with one another. There are no different options on this one. It's just 8, 16, 35 and 65. There are no remjet or ISO 50, 250 and 500. So you can see how much of an effect bloom is going to have. And that is pretty significant with eight millimeter, less significant with 16, even less so with 35 and even less so with 65. So what you're going to see here, if we turn it on and off, a lot more subtle at 65. And I kind of like that. 35, we're getting a little bit more intense here. You can see as we zoom out how it's affecting the image. 
16, it's getting a lot more affected. And then eight, obviously affecting all these bright areas we have in this image. 35 or 65 was a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna go 65 for just a little bit more of a subtle look. It's just little things that start to add up to one another. And then if we add back that film grain, you can see how all this is kind of coming together. Now you can add film damage and as you can see it adds specks and lines and things like that so it really kind of affects your image in a way. If we go Super 8 you can see we have all these dust and scratches on here that kind of will add more to that filmic vibe. I personally tend not to do that unless it goes for a very specific look, but it can add to the aesthetic if that's what your color grade is going for. So what I'm going to do here I'm just going to turn this off because I feel like I don't need it. So film breath is another setting we have here. If we enable that, it's going to kind of depend on what film you choose. And again, you kind of need to put it in and out. And this is another imperfection of film. You know, this is how it's going to look on an old film camera. You can see the kind of variation in warm to cool, the warm to cool going throughout this image. And you're not going to see that frame by frame, but if you hit play, you're going to see the difference in that kind of effect. And Super 8 is obviously the most exaggerated. So if we go to 35, it's a lot more subtle. It's harder to perceive, but it's just that subtle thing that adds to that film look. It's adding an effect that I personally don't want on this. This like really does impact the more filmic look because I know these kind of imperfections really do add to the film aesthetic because that is what real film looks like. So we're just gonna disable that for now. And then gate weave is when the film spool would kind of jump around in the camera. And so you'll have these imperfections of sizing and whatnot. So if we hit that and we go to eight millimeter, you can kind of see how that's going to affect your image as well. And it has this like little jitter effect. And so when you're looking at like old super eight millimeter film, you have this very like handheld at home, no stabilization kind of vibes. Now, again, I don't want this on this specific clip, but I think that having this on as an option is very nice when I do want it for specific vibes. Now this is a new feature on the newest version of Dehancer, but this is the overscan. And what you can do here is have like these cool film borders, which is very trendy right now. So if you wanted to do something like that, you can do that. You can pick your widescreen kind of vibe so you can see individual film frames. So honestly, the widescreen look really good to me. I'm not gonna use it on this clip, but like it's just really cool to see that you can have this kind of vibe when you are doing color grading. You can kind of dial in how much of this effect you want and then scale you can really dial in exactly what you want with the scale. I'm just going to bring that a little bit higher so it's not as excessive. And that is actually quite a nice vibe you got down there. Maybe not for a full video, but if you want to have a specific effect on one or two clips throughout the video, that is a cool look that you can have right there. And then the rest of these things are here for you if you want to use them. But honestly, this is how I use Dehancer. And I think it's a very, very powerful tool. I don't like how yellow things are looking. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to go to my greens up here and I'm going to go here, make them more green and I'm going to increase the saturation. And as you can see, different things are affecting now that we have the dehancer on the, the end there. So if I increase this, I'm increasing saturation there. So I'm gonna go back here to hue versus hue and I'm just gonna move my variables a little bit more here. And then we can just kind of dial in the exact green that we want. So if I turn that on and off, you can see how yellow versus green that gets. And I actually really like that green that we have going and that's, why I like Dehancer because it's just a little bit more creative and a little bit more powerful than the built-in tools of DaVinci. So you can really kind of just dial in exactly the kind of look that you want if you're going for more of a nostalgic filmic vibe. And that's how I like to color grade for the film look using both the free tools as well as Dehancer. As you can see, the before and after is night and day. And it's so cool being able to create a look from scratch. Again, if you like what you saw from Dehancer, don't forget to use my code MarkTaraz for a 10% discount on any of their products. Alternatively, you can check out my preset and LUT store. I will be updating it throughout the year as I continue to develop new looks. And if you're not about that desktop life, Dehancer also has an iOS app that you can check out and the experience is pretty much the same across desktop and mobile. It is a very familiar user interface. So. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions or what you would like to see in the future. I will do my best to answer as many as possible. My name is Mark Steiner and I will see you next time.